Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the ASRock X870E Tai Chi BIOS and the different settings that are in here that can be useful for those that are doing a new build. Right here what I have, as you guys can see, we have 8000 memory kit running at 8000 on a 9700X A-Core processor. So this is the advanced menu. If we go to, by pressing F6, or it says easy mode in the upper right here, we can press F6, and that'll take us to the easy mode. Easy mode is going to show the bare-bone settings that go over what storage devices you have, whether XMP or Expo is enabled, for example, how much RAM is installed. In this case, we have two 24GB sticks, so it's a total of 48GB of memory. It shows it here, and then the max speed that the CPU running, in this case, stock, as well as the BIOS version. So any sort of fans that are connected, I literally have nothing but the motherboard sitting on my desk right now with a Wraith Prism AMD cooler on here, and that's why the CPU is running a little bit warm because this isn't designed for this CPU, but that's okay. So we're going to go to F6 here to go to the advanced menu. We're going to take a look at the overclocking settings. So there is, on the latest BIOS, there is a 105 watt TDP mode. You can go ahead and enable that to get better performance just automatically so it's like a one button change performance boost is if you want to i guess get better multi-thread performance but i kind of leave that on auto performance preset this one automatically enables pbo for certain presets that are around certain tj max values and certain undervolt values with curve optimizers so you can see here so this is just like kind of like a quick menu to select something for example, if I don't want the CPU running over 85 degrees Celsius, but I want to undervolt the CPU by negative 20, I can select that preset and that'll automatically do that. And then platform thermal throttle limit. This you can specify an actual temperature in degrees Celsius that determines the maximum thermal throttle temperature. So in this case, the default I believe is 95 Celsius. But you can raise this to 100 if you want, or you can lower it to 85 or even lower if you don't like it running so hot. CPU overclocking. This is if we want to enable, I believe, OC mode. We're not really going to use that. I don't recommend using this, so I just leave it on auto. Graphics overclocking. This is applies if you want to overclock the integrated graphics on this CPU, which typically runs at a maximum frequency of 2.2 gigahertz. The DRAM frequency, you can select... If you're manually overclocking RAM, you can select whatever the RAM frequency is. Memory context restore, that should be enabled by default. And then the DRAM profile configuration is going to be where the XMP profile lies. So for example, default would be auto. Then there's a JDEC profile that comes with the RAM. And then there is the XMP 8000 profile, which is what we're using. One thing I like about ASRock is that it gives you the ability to manually select the JDEC or the XMP. A lot of these newer BIOSes from these other vendors do not give you the ability to select the JDEC. The only way to get the JDEC profile loaded is to actually clear CMOS or on the initial boot from out-of-box settings. So I like that ASRock lets you manually select it if, if you wanted to do that. Then we come to the DRAM timing configuration. This is where all the primary timings that would get loaded from the XMP profile or Expo profile reside, as well as any sub timings and tertiary timings. Also, if you're running four sticks of DDR5, especially if you're running a lot of RAM, like 128 gigabytes or 192 gigabytes, the DRAM bus control configuration menu options are in here. Azurox's BIOS is really smart in the sense that when you load the XMP profile, it automatically selects a specific proct ODT value. So there's been a lot of work done from their testing team, them being Azrock, internally to figure out what's the best impedance value for the on-die termination. So that's very nice that they've done that. You don't really see this sort of granularity with a lot of other motherboard vendors. Next, we move to VDDIO. So this is the MEM S3 voltage. This is going to be the bus signaling voltage from the CPU side to the RAM. And then you actually have the RAM voltages themselves here. 
So the XMP or Expo profile will take care of this automatically, but if you're manually overclocking, you do need to play around with these. Just know what the safe maximums are. Infinity fabric frequency divider is right here. So in this case, we're running 8,000. So to synchronize the infinity fabric with the the uh, U-clock, we want to run the infinity at two gigahertz because we are in a two to one ratio mode running at 8,000. And that's where you select that ratio there. The Uncore VSOC, this is actually a little bit high. This can actually go down lower to 1.2, but that's where you would adjust the VSOC voltage value. The maximum for this would be 1.3. VDD, so some more miscellaneous voltages. These are the signaling voltages for the fabric to the actual CCD. This is the, C this is the fabric's interface on the CCD side voltage. This is the fabric voltage on the IO die side so it's facing toward the CCDs so these can kind of come into play but I've never really had to change them but yeah the nice thing about ASRock's BIOS is that it gives you a very good description on the right hand side I like how they've actually organized this it's very easy to read and I actually think that they have one of the better BIOS layouts for people that are trying to really understand what these settings actually do external voltage settings here for the load line calibrations and things like that you can actually set the load line calibration in here I like that they actually provide a chart so you know if lower number is better or worse in this case more V droop the higher the number the higher the V droop sometimes other vendors use the opposite when referring to load line so in this case this load line is actually quite aggressive I'm surprised there's only three levels though so it's, it chose the middle one, which is fine. You can see there's a good, not too much V droop, but there's a good amount of V droop there for safety reasons. Then you can save user defaults. So if you ever have to recover or if you change BIOS settings later on and you want to revert back to a specific overclock profile, you can do that and you can load it from there. You can also save these profiles to a USB flash drive. So they have a lot of... Uh, quick settings to access from the OC tweaker menu. Let's look at the advanced menu. So the advanced menu is where everything else resides. So this is where the CPU configuration is going to specify things like whether you're using the integrated TPM or you're using a discrete TPM or you're going to disable the TPM, whether you're going to turn on simultaneous multi-threading. So for example, if we disable this, we're not going to have hyper-threading or in this case SMT enabled anymore. And then AVX512 as well you can disable that if you don't want it to support AVX 512 so these are kind of where those settings are and then PCI this is where you enable resizable bar that's on by default and also SR IOV is in here onboard devices configuration this is going to be the LEDs the RGB whether or not the LAN the Wi-Fi etc the Bluetooth radios are enabled whether we prioritize the external graphics card or whether we prioritize the integrated graphics when it is booting the onboard debug LED for the motherboard can show the CPU temperature that's really nice or you can disable that and then the gen 5 read drivers can also be played around with although I don't really see a reason for anyone to be changing any of this stuff storage configuration for the SATA ports this Motherboard does have six SATA ports, so it has the most out of all the X870E motherboards. ACPI, this is going to deal with S3 mode, S4 mode, like the how the system behaves in a low power state, what happens when there is a loss of power event or things like that, whether or not deep sleep is enabled. It has very good descriptions, again, in terms of what to look out for. Again, they're the only ones that I know of that have these really good descriptions. A lot of the other ones I've looked at are very vague. USB configuration, so that's pretty standard stuff. Trusted computing, this is the TPM module support here. These last three, AMD common BIOS settings, platform BIOS settings, and the overclocking menu, these are dictated. These come directly from AMD. This is kind of a standard from their AGISA that they use as a framework for the motherboard vendors to use. So in this case, the common BIOS settings have the CPU options and then the data fabric. So this is going to be for memory, 
And then the unified memory controls is the IMC. So this is where things like memory context restore, for example, would be hidden away in here. Uh, however, the vendors can pick and choose what they want to expose in other menus. So for example, memory context restore was in the OC tweaker menu. In platform bio settings, we have the AMD firmware version. So that's going to give us the AGISA, the chipset firmware version. So very detailed stuff from ASRock that you don't always see all this stuff exposed to the user in the different BIOSes from the different vendors. Graphics features. So they even have something where you can disable the HDMI 2.0 for the integrated graphics if you're running a very, very long HDMI cable, for example. Discrete USB 4. This uses four lanes of PCIe Gen 4, as we talked about in a lot of my other videos. So this can actually be disabled if you wanted to disable it. I don't really know why anybody would, though, but that's in here. And then the AMD Common Platform Module settings this is actually where you'll find the ability to set the link speed but also the ability to turn on a synchronous b clock or base clock so you can actually do base clock overclocking with the tai chi motherboard by accessing the base clock control here so in this case what you would want to set it to is this one where the CPU clock is derived from its own external clock and the SOC and all the PCIe lanes and all the other stuff is derived off of a different external clock. So that way it separates the two of them, hence the name asynchronous mode, and you can overclock the CPU using B clock overclocking without impacting the PCIe. So that's really nice that this motherboard has that. And then here is where you would actually set the base clock. So for example, if this was auto, you don't have access to that. If you set it CPU clock equals PCIe clock, everything is now synchronized to whatever you put in here. So I don't recommend doing this because you could cause problems with the PCIe and anything that connects through the SOC. So in this case, we would select the third option if we wanted to do a synchronous mode B clock overclocking, where we want to only overclock the CPU by, for example, one megahertz or 101 in this case, so I've increased it by one megahertz or you know two megahertz, it's going to be very very slight. You're not going to put massive numbers in here. It's going to be figuring out what allows the single thread performance to increase because what this will do primarily is impact the single thread performance. It won't affect the multi-thread that much because the multi-thread will be dependent on things like the power limit and the boost algorithm and your cooling and those sort of things. But if you want better single thread performance, this is one way to go about doing that. And then finally, NVMe RAID mode. So that's the PBS. And then finally, the overclocking menu, which I went over in my live stream build video of this. Pretty much this is where your PBO is going to reside if we're going to select the curve optimizer is here, for example. The curve shaper is also here. So that's where that resides. And then there's some other stuff for like LN2 mode, you know, SOC uncore mode, OC mode, also manual overclocking. This is OC mode. And then the infinity fabric dividers and the U-clock mode. Those are all part of the AMD overclocking menu. And of course, eco mode is also in here. So that is going to be an overview of the BIOS. Those are the primary settings, the advanced menu and the tweaker menu. The tool has a few other things. So the tool menu has the ability to update the BIOS. For example, instant flash, that is where you would update the BIOS if you have the latest BIOS on a USB thumb drive, for example. This motherboard also allows you to literally wipe the NVMEs. You can format NVMEs from within this BIOS. So pretty hardcore. I don't know of other vendors that allow this to be done. Also, the automatic driver installer is on by default. This is where you would disable that if you don't want the pop-up saying, hey, download ASRock's driver installer tool add-on or whatever. Like if you wanted to disable that, you would go in here and disable it from the tool menu. Hardware monitor menu is here. Of course, this shows you know CPU, motherboard, temperatures, etc. Security, like if you wanted to put a pass a supervisor password for the motherboard whether or not secure boot is going to be enabled. 
the boot priority menu here, whether or not CSM needs to be enabled if you're running some kind of legacy device, for example, like an old, old graphics card. And then finally, you could save changes and exit or discard changes and exit or just discard any changes. If you forgot, if you weren't sure of a change that you made and you wanted to discard all those changes, you can do that here. So that's pretty much it for the ASRock X870e Tai Chi. Overall, this is a very solid motherboard. It has a lot of options for your, if you're someone who's going to tweak and tune the system. And also, it is a very high-end board from ASRock. So it can support high speed, as we're showing here, 8000 DDR5. So I hope you guys found this video useful. And let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.